There's a lot of mysteries and a lot of conflicting information on gas flow with TIG welding. There is some guys that say, well, if you have this cup and you weld aluminum, this is like a number five cup, you only need about eight to 10 CFH because of the opening being so small. I've and heard so that a close. lot, actually. Yeah, like 13, you know, 12, 13 CFH. So yeah. I hear guys that are like under 10 and it's really hard to read on a gauge, especially on like a flow gauge like this. It's almost impossible to yeah. read because the accuracy on those is not all that great. Yeah. Like this style, like, okay, here. Where did it come from? Can we bash it? Uh, that one actually came with the Fronius. So that one's the... That's a Profax? Yeah. So, all right. Which is the first one I've gotten that actually had a brand name on it. Okay, so, so we got the nicest flow gauge in We got to be careful. We got to be careful about this, not bash it too hard. So, <laughs> yeah. But, the, so, you know, no, but no, then no, Miller I mean, sends this type with their TIG, which between the two, personally, I like reading this more than I like Okay, so it. I'm going to tell you why you're not going to like this anymore. In Great. Five minutes. Yeah. Wonderful. So... The difference is, and there used to be a guy, see, I can't talk shit about dead people either, but. <laughs> sure you can. They're <laughs> sure. not here to defend themselves. <laughs> it used to be a guy, I mean, a, a very talented and well-respected guy, like an older gentleman who used to do a lot of stuff for Lincoln Electric and for NASCAR. And he made a video and it's still out there where he was talking about regulators and flow beaters and how flow meters are so much better and regulators you just chucks in the garbage can. Well, the problem with a single stage flow meter like this one here, and yeah. I wanna say the, the brand name, it doesn't really matter which brand name is on there. Yeah. They're all to some degree, I tested six or seven of them. I bought them from Amazon, I bought them from my local welding supplier, I bought them from online welding suppliers. Yeah. Anywhere from like $19 to $79. And the, the results were basically the same. Mm -hmm. So the way how you're supposed to read this is, you're supposed to read this with the gas flowing. Right. So let's do that. All right. So right now you're supposed to read the bottom of the ball. Initial I may. The bottom of the ball. The bottom of the ball is where you're supposed well, to read. that's new information. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, this one here says C25, this scale. Yeah. And this scale here says Argon. So we're going to read this scale. The bottom of the ball is set right at 32, 32 and a half maybe. And then right now your tank pressure is at 300-ish PSI. Mm -hmm. So what I found with these, I made a test rig. I made a special line. I went to a calibrated gauge and I tested. And I, it, this whole test started for pulse MIG aluminum, where some people just had problems with that style. Um, I call it a single stage flow meter. So when the tank pressure is at 2200, when it's full, yeah. and I set this to 40, bottom of the ball at 40, and I ran this through my calibrated gauge, it was showing 40, 42, I mean, within reason, within yeah, spec. Sure. So then the next problem is, as you weld and weld and weld, and your tank pressure drops from 2200 to 200. Like what happened now? Right. At 40, not touching the dial, yeah. when you're down to 200 pounds of pressure, you're about at 18. No from way. From 40 to 18. As the tank pressure, because it's single stage, there's nothing, there's nothing regulating it's it. Not creating so its as the tank chamber, pressure, yeah. as the tank pressure drops, your flow rate drops as well. The so effective said, okay, flow rate. I yeah. can, I can deal with this. I know this is happening. So every 20 minutes, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do a little bit tweaking. Will it drop? You'll see it drop, or the effective. Flow oh no, rate you will drop. see it drop. You'll it see it, it will there. read. It will read 18. We're not talking about the calibrated gauge yet. Oh, I see. We're talking okay. about from here where it used to be 40. You don't touch the dial. Yeah, yeah hit the yeah. button again. Yeah. So here, time lapse. We're starting at 40 right there. And then as this thing goes on and on and on, two hours later, it'll be sure. right here at 18. Right. So, okay, I know this and I know to compensate for this because that's just the nature of how these things work. So now hit the button again. I dial it back up to 40. And you would think I'm back up to 40. I should have 40. I plug my calibrated gauge in and I see 27. The ball here floats at 40, just like it floated at 40 when the tank was at 2200 PSI. But 40 on a 200 pound tank is on the calibrated gauge only 28. Strange. And if you need 35 
to pulse MIG weld aluminum at a bare minimum, right. 28 just isn't enough. So that's your problem with your single stage flow meter. So people like the flow meter, they think it's accurate, they think whatever, it's like... It's what we've been but told this, to believe, yeah. Yeah, like I right. said, from like credible sources, yeah. a decade ago making videos, chucking the regulators because they're so shit and the flow meters are so good. Mm -hmm. Well, if you would have about a $250 two-stage flow meter, that becomes way more accurate. The single-stage ones like this just don't. Yeah. Well, I know what I'm shopping for now. So <laughs> what about, okay, well, uh, what do you think about these? This is still a single stage this is, situation. This, right? Yeah, this regulator though, what happens here is, I don't know about the particular one that's on here, but the one that came with your machine um, is, is a, this does not yeah, have a brand no. name on it, yeah. okay? But the one that comes with our machine is a Victor brand one. I believe it's made in Mexico, possibly yeah. even yeah, made yeah. in the USA. I've I'm got it sure. somewhere here. So I tested that one after I tested a few different ones. And I noticed that no matter if your tank is at 2200 or at 200, wherever you dial your rate, that's where it stays. And when I tested this at 40 with the, with the calibrated gauge, it was right at 40 or 41, no matter if the tank was full or empty. Now, there's a downfall to this style too. A, this is gonna cost you about three or four times of what that one cost. Sure. You know, and then you can say, okay, you get what you pay for. But the way how this works is there's a diaphragm in here. And what happens with the diaphragm is, if you use gases that have a lot of CO2 in it, like for MIG welding, mm -hmm. or for uh, dual shield flux core welding, like C25, or even straight CO2, even at C25, your regulator starts to ice up at some point. Straight CO2, a lot worse, ices up like right away. Right. And so the problem is it gets cold. First, you get, first it gets cold, you get water on it. Even if you don't get it to ice up, but if the temperature is really low, and then what happens here is, see when you hit the perch button and it's done flowing, hit it again, it's done flowing. If I disconnect this line now, there's no pressure in this line. I can crack the line open. The line from here to there is non-pressurized. Right. It's still filled with argon, but non-pressurized. Here, if I put this on here and I have the line plugged in, you hit the perch button and it only changes like one or two CFH. Stays. I can almost set that without having the gas flowing. But when you, when you stop, even if I close the tank, the line is always pressurized. Right. So that means that the diaphragm is also pressurized. And what happens is if you don't release this pressure, so you weld it three, four hours, big job, just welding, 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 and your, your regulator got really cold, and you did this on a really hot day, possibly outside in the sun. The tank was outside on a mobile job. Now the sun beats on it while you go in the truck, take half an hour lunch. All of a sudden you hear like a bang, like a balloon popping. Mm -hmm. Then you know you need a new diaphragm. Because the static it, pressure in yes. there increased. So yeah. what you have to do on this, if you use it in that manner where you have high gas flow with high CO2 concentration, you know, on a hot day where it it's prone to expand. Yeah. You have to actually dial it negative, bleed it off, so that the diaphragm is not pressurized if not in use. Got it. Well, just make that a had daily habit. Or, and it also would probably help to keep one for 100% argon, because the MIG welder, we you know, it's not we don't change tanks, so that one stays on the MIG welder. Yeah, this would stay and on a the... MIG welder, flow rate is not nearly as critical. Right. And then going back to gas to flow rates. So like I said, I've heard flow rates anywhere from like five. I'm looking at the MIG that I haven't used for three days and it's still under pressure. Yeah. Yeah. That shows you that the gas and the crimps are good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> flow rate anywhere, the, the rumors are anywhere from like three, uh, not three, five, eight, 10 CFH. We're back to talking AC aluminum. No, we're talking just any... take flow rates in general. Got it. You know, okay. depending on cup size and cup style and, and depending on personal experience, I'm gonna call this anecdotal stories that people, they weld with this, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's textbook. Well, my, my twist on my anecdotal experience is whenever you're welding, make or take, typically gas flow is your friend. 
It helps you with cleaning, with oxide removal, with all sorts of things. It helps you in case of this torch, for example, to keep the torch cool too. Mm -hmm. So this torch is, you could say air cooled. In reality, that high, high temperature silicone rubber is not really cooling anything. The cooling happens inside where other brands torch, like the really popular ones, use brass on the inside and have a... Like S this type stuff. Yeah, that type yeah. stuff. So here, there is a copper tube here, but then eventually the head is brass if you take this apart. Mm -hmm. And the tube is kind of small. The surface of the tube, the inside diameter, the surface on the inside is small. The, the, the gas holes into the head are small. Mm -hmm. And copper is a, um, brass is a okay good thermal conductor. This is all copper on the inside. It's a better thermal conductor, larger channels. So what helps you to keep the torch functional for a long time is high flow rates and long post flow. So these yeah. torches come out of the pipeline industry. Typically you see a valve on there. And yeah. the way how the pipeline boys do like it. these guys. Got, yeah, they don't, yeah. Pay, they don't pay for their own gas. So what they do is they hook it up to a 12 pack. When they come to the job in the morning, they open it up and then they let it rip all day. When they go home at night, then they close it and yeah. that's it. So Torch is nice and cool. Torch is nice and cool. <laughs> and even on an engine drive with 300 amps, these torches last for like six or eight months, where like a standard torch is gone in like a week or sooner. Yeah. Some don't even make it two days. Now, if you do regular household stuff, 100, 150 amp, you don't need any longer post flow than you would need on a regular torch, 100, 150 amp. Yeah, right. But if you go 200, 250 amp and you really want to extend the life of your torch, that's always a good idea. And what I've seen is, I just recently did a video on gas flow and gas distribution. The theory that I was told 25 years ago, 28 years ago when I started welding is, don't have too much gas. There's a vortex and it's coming out and it's sucking ambient air in and it's doing this and it's doing that. I've well, heard similar things, yes. specifically regarding aluminum. And even more so than that, I've heard that too much gas flow, welding aluminum with a standard cup can create arc instabilities or something like that. Is there any well, credence to that? I don't know. Yeah. You know I, 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 I Which tried is why to... he was like, keep it low, keep it at 13, keep it at 15. And I think it's just, well, there's a cheap. <laughs> you know, like they, they hate lugging the big bottles around. They hate yeah. paying 50 bucks, 80 bucks for a tank of gas. Well, and... we're sponsored by ARC3. So, so we're you're gonna, good. Just let it rip. We're turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, that's, that's really what it comes down to. I did a video. Um, I pictured how the gas flow really comes out. The vortex doesn't really build till 3 8 half inch out. And this is 3 16 out. So it's you're, a you're clean. For, it's it's yeah. calm. Where you're welding, it's calm for all intended purposes. And then there's different um, there's different cups you can put on with different screens for laminar flow. Oh and whatnot. sure, I mean we got you know the whole Furic gas lens kit, you yes, know, with yes. all that stuff, which for stainless and titanium does help a lot, and for visibility yeah, and yeah, stick out and yeah. all that. But I've always heard that alum, there's no reason you can't have great aluminum welds with just a standard cup. No, that is correct. You can do that. You don't need as much shielding. And also, when you, when you look at this here, you have like the big gas lenses with the big screen in here. And what happens with those screens, because of the alternating current, when it like, picture the alternating current, like a tiny little guy with a pressure washer sitting inside the aluminum and from the inside blasting that oxide layer off. Mm -hmm. And your gas blows it away. And again, higher flow rates help you to get this gas, help you to get that oxide out of the way sooner. Yeah. But what happens is those screens start to plug up like this. With yeah. Yeah. And then they're only good for aluminum because you don't need that accurate flow there. Mm -hmm. But if you try to weld stainless with it now, mm, no. Good to know. But it's good for it's good for keeping people in business. You know, you weld aluminum with this, and then you need another one for stainless. Yeah. Percent. Michael. <laughs> well, and then that's probably why he recommends to use that for aluminum. It doesn't have the additional screens yep, in there. Yep, yep. Okay, great to know. That's a wealth of information.